In this course on the missing basics of engineering, I'd like to begin by asking a question. Do engineers learn the right stuff? Engineering education today is filled with the basics, math, science, engineering science. Yet many lists calling for reform are the same. They call for more design. They call for more people skills. They call for more communication skills. So in this micro lecture, we want to do three things. We want to argue that there is important stuff missing in engineering education. We'll call that missing stuff the missing basics. We want to identify it clearly and rigorously, and we want to understand why that missing stuff is so important right now. So let's, let's begin in an interesting way, and let's recall the motivational speaker Stephen Covey's famous phrase, begin with the end in mind, and talk about graduating seniors on their first engineering experience in a senior design course. I've been blessed with uh, 20 years of teaching in a senior design course in general engineering at the University of Illinois. That course was established back in the 60s in response to the, the injection of science and math into the curriculum back then. But the important thing is that once the course got started with a Ford Foundation grant, the money ran out and it became an industrially sponsored course thereafter. So think about it. You've got seniors, you've got a team of seniors, a faculty advisor, and the, the students are gonna go out on a project, like this project here for a tortilla company. And they go out into the world, and it's a perfect moment to ask the question, what is it that these students haven't learned as part of their engineering education? After all, they've had, every, they've had all the math, they've had the science, they've had the design courses. Let's see what they know how to do out in the world. Well, the first thing that we find out when they go out into the world is that they don't know how to ask a good question. They go meet the client, and, and it's very hard for them to ask good questions about what was tried before, what's worked, what hasn't worked, who are the vendors. So as a good coach, over 20 years, I've encouraged the students to ask good questions. I've helped them ask good questions. I've, I've, I've taught them how to ask good questions. But it's a little bit strange that they don't know how to do this. After all, this is such a fundamental skill to being a great engineer. And we might, we might call it, um, we might call this inability to ask a failure of Socrates 101 because Socrates, after all, taught the Western world how to ask good questions in the fifth century BC in Athens. Well, you coached them on, the question, on how to ask questions, and then what don't they know how to do? Well, they first, they don't know how to label things. They don't know how to, they don't know the names of pieces of technology, but, but worse than that, they don't know how to label patterns in the data that will help them solve the problem at hand. So in this sense, um, they failed Aristotle 101, who was himself a master at, at labeling patterns in, in knowledge and, and helped us figure out the, what would actually has remained the college curriculum to this day. So this is, we could call this inability to label a failure of Aristotle 101. So you coach them on that, and then what don't they know how to do? Well, they don't know how to model conceptually. They do know how to model with equations. They're Pavlovian dogs when it comes to plugging into equations, plug into Newton's laws or Maxwell's equations, and they're great. Um, but what they need to do is come up with causal chains. This happened, then this happened. Or they need to break things up into lists, that the system consists of these six parts, or that there are these three phenomena. And so you coach them on, on this kind of conceptual modeling, and we might call the inability there a failure of Hume 101, based on the connection to causality, or a failure of Aristotle 102, who was himself a master categorizer. Thereafter, They've got the problem defined, but they need to break it into smaller problems. So they don't know how to decompose the bigger problem into a, a small set of smaller problems that can actually be solved. Now, of course, most of these projects are, are hard enough that they can't be solved in a simple one-shot way. They must be decomposed. So decomposition is essential, as was recognized by Descartes in his famous Discourse on Method, where he explicitly argued that problem solving was essentially about decomposition. Thereafter, 
oftentimes they need to query the real world by running a small experiment, but the bias towards plugging into theoretical equations that's been taught by the current engineering education model is such that they, they oftentimes will not turn to the real world, will not turn to experimentation unless forced to. And so we might say this is a failure of Locke 101 or Bacon 101 or, your, or perhaps your favorite British empiricist. Thereafter then, they need to actually come up with solutions to the problem. They need to visualize their way into solutions. They need to imagine uh, creative ways to solve the problem and yet drawing and visualization has almost been removed entirely from the engineering curriculum um, uh, as uh, discussed uh, in some depth in Eugene Ferguson's book, Engineering and the Mind's Eye. And so we might say this is a failure of uh, Da Vinci or Monge 101 uh, in recognition of their contributions to visual thinking. And then finally, the students need to present um, the results of their completed project to a client, either in written or oral form. And as the boss said in the movie Cool Hand Luke, what we have here is a failure to communicate. And so we might call this a failure of Paul Newman 101 um, uh, in, in connection with, with that movie. So it's, it's a bit odd that we have such glaring failures of things learned in a supposedly complete engineering education. And we, we recognize that these things are important by calling them the missing basics. We acknowledge that the basics, math, science, and engineering science, are important, but we recognize that these other things are as important, if not maybe even more fundamental to being a great engineer, and we suggest that um, by invoking great figures of intellectual history, we underline that importance. Moreover, by invoking philosophers, we enlarge the space of what we consider to be rigor by adding conceptual, conceptual rigor or philosophical rigor to the mathematical and scientific kind. Finally, by talking about the missing basics, we unlock what we call the three joys, the joy of engineering, the joy of community, and the joy of learning. And we suggest that, en that the missing basics will help make you a great engineer, Missing basics will help you be terrific in working with people, and it will help you learn new stuff on your own and from others. So why are the missing basics so important now? Well, the old paradigm of specialization in technical areas was okay in a specialized world. Then, engineers did technically specialized work in domestic hierarchical organizations, enhancing existing categories of product or service. Now we live in a creative era, uh, what Tom Friedman has called a flat world, and we need category creators in addition to category enhancers. So today, engineers do integrative work spanning special specialties in global organizations, making things that have never existed. Um, this means that the missing basics and the basics are important like never before. So the bottom line is we've identified these missing basics. We're going to be studying them throughout the course and suggesting that they unlock the three joys. We're going to suggest that they add to our, our portfolio of rigor, adding to math and science rigor with the conceptual kind, and that the missing basics will help you be a linchpin in this creative era. We're not suggesting to ignore the math and science. You'll have plenty of, of classes where you're where your math and science ability are put to the test. We are suggesting that the missing basics will help you be more thoughtful about your math and science and they'll also make you more effective as an engineer with customers in a changing world.